Hey y'all, Courtney Lyons here with Diamonds Are Girls Best Friend and today I'm starting a new series on my channel and it is going to be called um, my favorite artist series for specifically for diamond painting. So um, yeah, let's get started. So I have my little notes right here. Um, the parameters of this kind of ranking things. This is my top seven. I'm probably gonna do five to 10 for each subject. Today is going to be landscape. So I'm really excited to be doing the landscape. Um, it's probably my favorite. I'm starting off strong here, guys. Um, it's my favorite to like fl floral and landscape. I don't know if I can choose between the two of them. I'm going to specifically outline um, where you can find these because you should know it's going to be specific to diamond painting so they might not necessarily be my favorite artists although um a lot of these I, I really like might not be my specifically like favorite artist but at least for diamond painting specific where they are already licensed with a company out there and then i'll tell you which company that i have found they're licensed with and i'm going to be talking um talking about the medium that they use and as well as showing you examples like why i like them why rank them where they are and uh, showing examples on my computer. I'll move you guys over to my computer and I'll show you examples of um, their artwork on there. They usually have their own sites or Instagram. Um, they do also have uh, some of my went specifically on to like Diamond Art Club or Dreamer Designs to show you the art. Um, they I do have some of them. I don't have all of them as in like I don't have one canvas from all of them. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I'll end each artist with what I have of them. So yeah, let's get started. This is an order. So this is ranking the ones that I found. I went and scoured a lot of the different diamond painting sites and brands to see what I liked most. And I'm sure that along the line, things might change a little bit, especially if they introduce new artists. But in the meantime, this is my ranking. So number seven uh, is Laura Milnar Iverson. So I'll put her information right here, but I'll also be linking it down below in the description. Um, so I will kind of talk about what I like and then we'll move over to the computer and talk about it as well. So I really, so her media, so sorry, you can find her on the one with the diamond art. And actually, if you go back on my channel, um, maybe I'll put a banner right here where you can watch where, uh, I go on and I talked about her and I chose a diamond painting and I bought it. I'll still be doing that series because I'll be di buying diamond painting, um, paintings like that, but, and this is just the ranking kind of video. But yeah, uh, I went on and I bought Morning in Redwood Forest. I don't remember the actual name. I'll post it right here and I will show you on the computer. So uh, I, I don't think I'll bring the actual thing down, but if you check out my channel, it's there. Uh, I've done the unboxing as well when I got it. So the one with the diamond art is where you can find her and she has quite a bit on there actually. So um, her media is, uh, so oh, this is one of the interesting things I liked about her. She used poured, she uses poured painting as well as mixed media. I think she might use watercolor and acrylic somewhere in there too. But um, I've tried poured painting, guys. It is not easy. It is really hard. When I first tried it, I was like, oh, this is so much fun. Too much uncertainty for me. I mean, I'm struggling with watercolor, with the way I, you just, there's some things you can't control with watercolor and the same thing, except harder <laughs> with paint pouring. And if you haven't heard of paint pouring before, it's where you kind of almost super liquidify acrylic-like painting and then you put certain things in it for it to do certain things. I know that doesn't make any sense. As you pour the paint onto the canvas and then you use, um, people use straws, people use blow dryers, people use like tipping the canvas to go on and um, make it do these crazy different things. And then they put certain things in it to make it, like chemicals in it to make it look bubbly. Anyway, we'll move on to the, computer in a second so you can see but I really like that like that she made her poured art look so detailed because it is not easy to pour art in general but to do it detailed would be I just I, I don't even know that I'll ever try it and I, I try a lot of different art mediums but um I just I really admire that plus it's very colorful it's very beautiful um it's kind of like a 
it's it's realistic, but it's also a little bit surreal. Um, some of it reminds me a little bit of, um, oh shoot, older famous artist, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, and I can't believe, I keep saying, thinking Van Gogh, but it's not Van Gogh. Um, anyway, her art sort of reminds me of a more modern version of this artist. Um, okay, yeah, let's take it to the computer. So you can see right here, she has, come on, come on. Here we go. So here she is right here. This is Laura Milner Iverson and her bio is right there. I probably won't be reading all the bios just for the sake of, of time, but um, she says she does like likes natural landscapes in the Pacific Northwest is kind of her thing. She has a whole thing of cats. I love that. I love so these cats looking into the moonlight with these different, anyway, it's so cool. And she does her pore art and she does, um, I think it looks like acrylic or oil along with it, maybe even watercolors. She might just do a bunch of mixed media, but it's really cool. Here's all her kind of, so she has her seascapes here, mythical creatures. I mean, she's everywhere, crows and birds, cats and felines. I love it, that's its own thing. Um, poured paintings. Anyway, I kind of wanted to show you some of the poured paintings because look how incredible that is. Poured art is not easy. And I wonder if she goes on, lets it dry, and then paints on the detail. It'd be interesting to see. Anyway, so here are some examples of her landscapes. Look at that. That is so cool. It's not as detailed as I normally like, but there's something about the colors and like the abstractedness with the added detail that I just absolutely love. Look at those bald eagles. Oh, you know how I am with bald eagles. Love them. For those of you who haven't maybe been following my channel, we have bald eagles that are, let's look back at this, that so many bald eagles that we see right outside our windows. And it is so cool to watch them. Um, I was thinking the seascapes are pretty cool. Gosh, look at these. And now let me show you, I can show you, you know what? I'm just gonna post the picture rather than looking it up right now of the one that I have. Gorgeous, gorgeous. But yeah, that's Laura Milner Iverson. Um, I'm gonna post right now, right here. It is, plus with the name of the kit that I have, I believe it's Redwoods in the Morning or something like that. Just this gorgeous picture of the Redwoods and I absolutely love the Redwoods. I've visited as many times as I possibly can. I think three times, um, cause it's quite the drive for us. And I've just loved it. I think it might be my favorite national park. All right, let's move on to number six. Okay, so somehow some of my footage got deleted, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> so I didn't really get to explain big little illustrations to you guys, but I'm going to start with, um, yeah, he's number six for my landscapes. And his information, his socials, all kind of just pop up right here in the corner. So you can see that. But down below, I'll have a link to like the places where you can find him and his own personal website. Anyway, some things I like about his artwork quite a bit is the vibrancy. It's realistic and yet vibrant. It doesn't have that... Uh, with a neutral kind of tones that a lot of landscapes might have. Not that I dislike that. I love that in landscapes. But for a diamond painting, it is definitely more fun to have more color in there and vibrant colors. So I really like that about his illustrations. Um, I like that they seem to tell a story. You can see kind of in the background one that I put in there. Um, it's a, it looked like a grandpa and his uh, grandson maybe having a time talking, looking at the sunset. Anyway, I love the stories in his art. Uh, his medium is, I believe, just regular like acrylic or oil, but he, he also like, just mixed media as well as digital art that he adds in there. So that's pretty cool. Digital, digital art is harder than it looks. I do not at the moment own any of his landscapes, but let's take it to the computer and check out what he has. All right, here's Chris Bigelow, um, and he calls his Bigel illustrations, and oh my gosh, just look at these. Why don't we come into one of these? I mean, look at this, this sledding. This family that just wants sledding, obviously it has the, um, just look at that, 
gorgeous. Look at the way he puts in that detail and the light is not just, oh, so many different colors in just a winter landscape, which is hard to do with one. I mean, there naturally is a lot of color in winter landscapes, but um, he does quite a bit of different things too. That's kind of cool. Not necessarily a landscape, but um, yeah, I like that he kind of moves things around. What's something that he's done that I've seen recently? I believe, let's see. Oh, look at some of these color. I don't know if he does this with AI art or digital art because I know he uses the digital art. Look at that. Oh, family. I and mean, that's more of a portrait style. That is so fun. Anyway, yeah, I really like his tell a story. They're very colorful. Um, I think, I believe I've seen this one on Dreamer Designs' website. I suppose I could go on to Dreamer Designs, but... I liked his personal site. He had a lot more art to be able to see. So anyway, yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. Just having all the different little subjects in here makes things so much fun to diamond paint when you get all those different subjects in there. Look at this one right here. Oh, look at this. So pretty. Okay, let's move on to number five in the ranking. All right, number five is Dominic Davison, and man, he's licensed with a ton. He's licensed with Diamond Art Club and Dreamer Designs, Oraloa, and um, Paint with Diamonds, which I believe is licensed. Um, correct me on that, but I'm fairly certain that, it, that they're licensed as well, and he's with them. So um, digital, he uses digital art as well as traditional too. He takes his traditional and then he changes it around with the digital art. I believe that's um, what his whole thing is. Anyway, I also like the detail on his and that it's very realistic. Like um, he has this whole set of where he does a bunch of cottages and every cottage one that I have, I like the perspective of the cottage in one spot with kind of the, usually like a pathway or, um, Something in the distance where you can see, it almost was like a journey. You can see the journey that somebody took to get to the cottage. And I think it's beautiful. Um, the colors are very beautiful. Um, it might render itself a little bit too soft for diamond painting in some ways, but I mean, I don't have one of his yet. And so maybe it depends. I bet Diamond Art Club has does amazing. Let me know in the comments below if you've done a Dominic Davison from Diamond Art Club or any of those other um, uh, brands companies because I'd love to know and I, I do plan on getting some of his artwork down the line. His stuff is incredible amazing and I want one of those cottages that just looks so cozy. I want to go live in one of those cottages in real life. So I, I like the hominess of, of feeling like I could go visit one of these places and um, just enjoy being there like somewhere I could just visit in real life. So uh, yeah don't own any at the moment but let's move to the computer and we will check out some of his artwork. All right, here's Dominic Davison. You'll have seen a lot of his stuff. He does um, these cityscapes in the Mediterranean, you can see right here. Um, but more specifically, these cottages. And so I'll show you what I mean by like, it feels like somewhere you can go visit. Uh, let's see, which one is, ooh, it changed it on me. That's confusing. I actually liked one that was in the other one. Uh, go back to the first ones. <laughs> Come on, computer. There we go. Okay, uh, is this one right here? Look at that. Doesn't it feel like you're going to go visit just a friend? Maybe like an older lady from church and she invited you and your family to come over for cookies or something like that. And you, she gives you the address and you just walk over there and you see this pathway and you're like, oh, that's her home right there. And you just go and visit and it just is gorgeous. And she's great at gardening. And I, <laughs> I always make these narratives up in my head, but doesn't it make you feel like that? Just this homey feeling of visiting somebody who just has a well-kept garden and this cozy cottage. And I don't know. Oh, here's another one. How do I get out of this? Let me just try it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, what's another one? that I really liked, the little cottages. If 
find it. Let me find it. Uh, don't move, don't move, don't move. Oh, this is, oh, bother. Okay, well, that's cute too. <laughs> it's the one with the horses that I wanted to get to. But, oh, okay. I wasn't a horse, it was a man walking. But look how cool that is. Doesn't that tell like a pretty cool story? Like you're walking along the road and there's this pathway, you look down the pathway and you see that there's this like castle church thing in the background past somebody's house that has an owl in the window and the cat and the flowers and this man's walking and you wonder where, what he's doing, where he's headed. And oh, just gorgeous. I, I just, just gorgeous. Okay, uh, let's move on to number four. Okay, number four is going to be Anne Marie Bone, and she is with Dreamer Designs. And um, a little bit different, um, she's a little bit more down the lines of Laura Iverson. Why do I always do this with her name? Laura Marie Iverson. Nope, that's Anne Marie. <laughs> Laura Milner Iverson. <laughs> Struggling with these three named ones, right? Okay, but Anne Marie Bone is similar to hers in um, a lot of the style and color. Ooh, sorry, I bumped you. A lot of the the color is very very vivid. They almost have these large brush strokes and um, almost what what I would call I don't know what it's actually called, but I, I call it a little bit like the fast painting. Obviously, it doesn't mean it takes it, it's like it's different than some of these other landscapes where they use oil or mixed medias or um, anything like a colored pencil or a uh, did I say oil? Oil and acrylic. That's kind of where I was going for. Um, but I really like that um, she uses oil paints, acrylic, and watercolor mixed media. She uses, you can tell she uses mixed media in hers. But um, it's just gorgeous with these broad, big brush strokes, kind of like um, not quite the same as the poured painting, the poured acrylic that um, Laura Milner Iverson does. But um, yeah, I, it's just gorgeous. The colors, the colors. Um, I see them on Dreamer Designs. We'll move to the computer in a little bit and check those out because her Dreamer Design ones are, oh, just gorgeous. And there's this one, I'll, I'll just show you once we get there. Anyway, yeah, let's check her out. I don't own anything of hers yet, but I very much plan to. I see them all the time and I almost just barely don't get them, but I, I really need to get um, some of her paintings. Just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, Anne-Marie Bone right here. Just take a look at these colors, guys. Ah, uh, you know what? Go on into the site. I'll post, I'll put this down below. This is her actual site and um, not Dreamer Designs, but you can see what they have on Dreamer Designs. Uh, just, they have this one. This is the, this is the uh, bench one I was talking about. Look at that. How many colors can you possibly put? I mean, she put like every color possible in there. I want it so bad. I need to get that one. Just, oh, here, let me see. There's, there's a better. That's just absolutely incredibly gorgeous. Ah, oh, and I don't know how it would run. It has to be confetti crazy. It just has to be because to get all of those colors in there. So I'd be interested to see. The confetti might put me off a little bit of why I haven't chosen. I don't, I love confetti actually, I really do. But you know, when, it, when it, you know, this is gonna be like, especially a long, to do this for a long time canvas, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while. So anyway, her stuff is just so pretty. Look at this horse one right here the colors in that one. She uses so many rainbow palettes. It's like she takes every color of the rainbow and then puts it in there and doesn't do a lot of color mixing. She kind of leaves the raw rainbow color in there and creates it out of there. Like, I don't know how else to explain it besides that. Do you know what I mean? Know what I mean? Give me a thumbs up down below if you agree. So, oh, here, here's another one I've seen on Dreamer Designs. Look at that. Oh, I know why I never did actually order one was because I couldn't choose. <laughs> I couldn't choose what was best. Sorry, I know it shakes a little bit. So I, she really does kind of have a, a, a raw color palette sort of thing, like this one right here, versus something that's more blended, like, like this one right here. Um, so cool. She does hers a little, oh, look at this lightning one. Oh, I haven't seen this one before. I haven't seen this one as a diamond painting. That is really pretty. I didn't realize how zoomed in you guys were. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, hers is fun. That might be put on my top list of priorities of ones to get next. Gorgeous. Okay, 
Let's do number, I believe we're on number three. Are we on number three already? Number three. Okay, sorry if I wiggle a little bit. My leg's falling asleep and I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I might like, I'm just trying to make my legs stop going to sleep. But the next one, um, so this is number, I believe this is number three, right? No, number four. So this is four. This is Trill Trisha Riley Matthews. Stop it with the three name things. I can't get it. <laughs> Trisha Riley Matthews. And I do own one of those. I'll have to talk about that in a second. Oh my gosh, her stuff is gorgeous. And this one is a little bit off topic. Her landscape, though, in her backgrounds are incredible, but you could almost kind of argue that she does portraits, um, but, and that's like a whole different video I'll do with portraits, uh, realistic portraits specifically, and she might still make it onto that one, but I, I think that her landscaping, especially in the one I have, Coming Up Roses, oh my gosh, it is just, I fell in love with it, it's gorgeous, I just, um, I don't know quite if she fits the category of all these other ones that are on here. That not quite a landscape, but she just had to make it in here. I just, I love her stuff. Anyway, so she uses, um, it's cool. She uses some mixed media um, watercolor. I was wondering if she used colored pencils. Some of them look like she does, but more specifically, I think she focuses on pastels and like, I don't know if she uses oil pastels. I'm going to guess based off what it looked like, looks like that it is oil pastel which is a media that I kind of dabbled in, but um, yeah, I, that's that's a hard one to work with, but it just creates this gorgeous and vivid, um, but you can get really realistic with it. And I just, I really love that. I love, one thing I absolutely love about her paintings is um, her, th they tell a story and it's because of the subjects that she has in there and then just, there's, there's this one, you know what, let's move to the, let's move to the computer and I'll show you because like I said, her paintings tell a story. So it, the best way to show you is her paintings to show you what I mean by what story she's telling. All right, let's move over there. All right, here's Trisha Riley Matthews, which I, like I said, I'm pretty sure she does. Well, I know for sure she does the pastels because it says so but i don't know if she mixes pastels with other i know it probably says mixed media on there um or it does say mixed media so she i'm sure she does but and this is the one i'm like i don't know if this counts as landscape but the one i have that i absolutely love from her could totally be a landscape slash portrait not really a portrait it's a landscape it's definitely a landscape so this is the one i own from her is coming up roses Let's see if i can make that so you can see it better and I do have an unboxing on there. You guys should go check that out. Um, I love how you have a story behind each and every one of her paintings. Like this is a little story of these girls picking some roses or something like that. It's gorgeous. Let's take a look at her other things too. Are you gonna go back for me? There we go. <laughs> So look, you can see this one right here is these two little girls waiting, knocking on the door with some flowers to surprise somebody, maybe their grandma. Um, this little girl, I mean, it's so random, but she's feeding her ice cream cone to a pig with some kittens in her tricycle basket. But it's so perfect. It's so much fun right outside the ice cream shop. Um, she also has a lot of little details that she puts into things that, uh, I mean, look at this one. This is like making cookies at grandma's house. Um, this girl with her her chicks and her pig and they're just so homey and cozy and the detail's incredible. There's one in here that I absolutely need. I'm trying to see if I can find it. First off, look how fun that one is with the purple. Okay, this one right here, A Mother's Love. So here's the mother duck with her ducklings and there's the little girl just crouched there. My kids, that one like melts my heart because my kids, oh, I didn't even notice the kitten before. Here, let's click on it. My kids absolutely always, all three of them, maybe it's a kid thing or maybe it's just my kid thing, but they crouch, they crouch like this. <laughs> it's probably a kid thing. And when they look at things, they don't usually kneel down or anything because they have the flexibility to crouch like that and just look down at things. Oh, it's so cute. Maybe I'll even, darken her hair somehow to like if I were to get this one which I want to 
maybe I darken her hair so it'd be more like my daughter who has her little darker hair and um, oh, just so sweet. So sweet. Okay, number two. All right, did I say four for Trisha Riley Matthews? I totally meant three um, because now we're down to our last two. And I had the hardest time deciding. Um, ultimately, this next one made the, I bet this is a, quite a debate between Diamond Painters on these two, which is better because Diamond Art Club does both and they're very, very popular. Um, I'm pretty sure this next one is only Diamond Art Club. And of course, it's our beloved Chuck Finson. I mean, he had to make this list, right? He is an incredible artist, especially well known for his landscapes. Um, I think he's only with Diamond Art Club. I've heard through the grapevine that there's a couple other companies, but I wasn't able to find them. Um, maybe I didn't look that hard. Honestly, I love the way that Diamond Art Club renders his stuff and it could be confetti crazy and it's not. So I, I, I love confetti to a point in a landscape. I'm a little bit more hesitant with confetti um, because I feel like there's a lot of unnecessary confetti that could happen. Um, and I feel like Diamond Art Club, just their rendering is already great. I didn't even look past Diamond Art Club, but if you want to look for more, there's he might be licensed with someone else. He might not be. Um, he uses specifically oil painting. I'm not sure if he uses anything else. It didn't say anything on any of the sites that I looked up or in his specific official site was more, um, my leg is, <laughs> is anyway, specific site did specifically say oil painting, which makes sense. If you look at his paintings, they're, they're very much, they're, excuse me, they're very much oil paintings. So, um, what I absolutely love about his is, is just the, honestly the feeling I get. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, but I get this I look at his paintings and I feel peace and I feel introspective and I want to go sit there wherever his view is where he's standing I don't know if he goes to these places and paints them or if he does it based off of what you know kind of just go for it sort of thing but I want to sit wherever he's sitting painting and just sit there and relax and enjoy the view and it just inc brings incredible peace I love his focus on nature and um how a lot of his paintings have these little animals like a little duck over here and a little goose flying around up there some deer in the background and the mountains I'm a mountain girl guys and oh my gosh his mountains are incredible they I mean he has a lot of different mountains and a lot of the different paintings. They're all different from each other and I want to do all of them. <laughs> I just, I love mountains and he does an amazing job with them. Okay, so I do own two of them. I own Space for Reflection and I own um, Cottage on the Sea. And let's move over Diamond Art Club site because that's on the computer. Um, and I will show you the, uh, I'll show you the ones that I have and I'll show you the ones that I want, which truly I want all of them, but I'll show you my top ones. All right, I feel like for most of you, Chuck Pinson does not need an introduction. And you know what's funny is the two canvases that I have are actually the first two listed here. So I have Space for Reflection, which I got off of, um, I got from Joanne's and I'm so excited to do that one. That's gorgeous. It's a lot more muted. Then some of his other stuff, he seems to be getting, he has quite a bit more vivid things on here. And then Cottage by the Sea is the other one I have. And I'm so excited to do that one. You know, Cottage by the Sea, there's a companion piece that on here. It's a different color palette, but very similar lighthouse cottage sea view. Let's actually go and look at it right now. It's near the bottom. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Sunrise by the Sea. Oh, I want this one so bad. Look how gorgeous that is. I mean, his level of detail. And Diamond Art Club's rendering is really good. Let's look at the rendering. Look at that. That's gorgeous. They still managed to get all the detail in there while also doing plenty of what looks like would be good color blocking. Not that I don't, like, like I've said, I don't mind confetti. I think that it's, I actually love doing it and it, it adds so much detail, but I like the mix and just the rendering style of Diamond Art Club works so well with this somehow when you wouldn't think it would um, with kind of their bolder look to it. But 
Anyway, I think that would be a beautiful companion piece for the Cottage by the Sea. Uh, anyway, I'd love to have that one. So, Chunk, Chunk Pinson. Is that the second time I've done that? <laughs> I struggle. Okay, Chuck Pinson. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chuck Pinson, if you ever watch this, that I called you Chunk. <laughs> but your art is amazing. Look at some of these. So, so pretty. I really also want... Um, the Colors of Life right here. Can you see these? I don't think you can. All right, right here. And then Love Lifted Me. I honestly, it would be my goal to have every Chuck Pinson Diamond Art Club available. Just so much fun. Look at the Tropical Oasis. Oh, the other one that I, I almost got it one time and I just didn't. Oh no, don't go there. That's a good one though too. Accidentally clicked on it. Where are you? Oh, Inspiration of Spring Meadows. It's been in my cart so many times and I just never, I just never did it. But look at that. Look at the purple in that. Oh, so pretty. So gorgeous. The only thing, I think what's ever stopped me on this is that the purple mountains seem a little less purple when you click over. And those trees right here look a little too brown. They look a little bit dead. Um, but it's so hard to tell. Anyway, okay. So, number one, guys. Um, if it's a contender with Chuck Pinson, you probably might know who it is. Number one, guys. Okay, so if you knew that I had Chuck Pinson up there and that it was a debate on whether I should do Chuck Pinson or this next one, then you might already know that it's Abraham Hunter. And oh my gosh, it was a hard choice between him and Chuck Pinson, but overall, he kind of won over because of the animals. And I love animals. I mean, I love landscapes. I love the animals and the flor floral. He has such a mix of floral animals and landscapes, and sometimes he meshes them together. And I mean, so does Chuck Pinson. He, but there's something about the animals for um, Abraham Hunter that I just absolutely adore. And I, I know I, I'm going to have a different um, category for animals, realistic and cartoony. <laughs> Who knows? I, definitely realistic animals. I don't know if I'll put a cartoony one. Oh, you guys, um, if you could please down below, tell me what other subjects or I guess categories you want me to put in this series because I'd love to do that. I have a lot in mind but maybe you'll think of something I haven't thought of yet specific to diamond painting. Um, but yeah his landscapes with the animals I mean I love being able to like the look and the, the it, okay I know what it is the bolder look it has almost a bolder color and look to it than the Chuck, Chuck Pinson does not Chunk Benson. Sorry, Chuck Benson. <laughs> anyway, I like the the boldness to it. There's something about it. Sometimes you just can't explain it. It just calls to me more, but barely because <laughs> they're both amazing. Um, but also, I think his. While well, I would sit and watch the whatever landscape that Chuck Benson has with Abraham Hunter, I feel like if I were to sit and watch, I'd be, I'd be seeing more of a story that was happening um usually with his animals and um just his subjects in general but yeah and the floral that he has i'm just a sucker for flowers i love landscapes but if you get a floral painting in there that's more of a realistic one oh just love it <laughs> it just gives me shivers um but yeah the perspective everything and i only own one abraham hunter i want them all all of them all of them um but i i have mountain morning which i do plan on working on soon I mean, it's hanging up. I haven't kitted it up yet, but I, I will be working on that one. So excited! And his bears, oh, his bears are adorable. All right, let's move to the. Let's move to the. I almost said piano. Mm, computer. <laughs> let's move to the computer and let's check him out too. Oh, Abraham Hunter, how I adore your art. Look at that Horse Valley Farm, gorgeous Christmas home, Evening Melodies. That was kind of a newer one, I think, and. Oh, when I saw that one, wait, no, maybe not. I'm thinking of a different one. Whatever it is, when I saw that one, it is so, 
Jess, that would have been so much fun. Joys of Summer, that's also one that's been in my, sorry, I know it's bumping and moving around, one that's been in my thing for a while. I know that's not technically really a landscape, it's more of floral, but his landscapes are incredible. He just overall does animals, landscapes, and florals so perfectly. Abrams Fall, let's see, where's the other one right here that I really loved? Um, oh, Springtime Cottage, let's look at that one. Sorry, I know it's bumping so bad. Let's move this over here. Just click on it. You guys see that okay? Just look at the flowers in there. Apparently I have a thing for cottages <laughs> and stream that's over here. The bird bath, the flowers. Oh my gosh. Just in the way that all so many of his trees have have uh, the flowered trees. I love springtime when all the trees are flowering and everything is turning green again. It's all a bright green. Love that about his stuff. Um, anyway, yes, Abraham Hunter. And the one that I own from Abraham Hunter, gosh, look at that one beyond the shore. I almost got that one too. Ooh, I'm really actually sad that I don't have that one. But the one that I did get that came out during the Black Friday release at the same time was this mountain morning that, although not as vivid in color, it's the mountains, guys. This is, this is my thing. Love this so much. Let me zoom you out a little bit. I also have an unboxing for that. Um, I think I already said that. That you can go check out and I do plan to do that one soon. You've got moose back there, these cubs. Oh, and then they have like this, brown AB that they put in the cub right here to kind of highlight the side. It's gonna be so much fun. And the purples, I gotta look at their rendering really fast. Just so pretty, so gorgeous. Oh, I wanna be there and I wanna be sitting on the shore watching those moose and those bears from far away, <laughs> from far away. Uh, or on the kayak. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. Just be right there on the kayak in the lake and just kayak past all these beautiful animals and the trees. I love the light coming in through here. Just, he does an incredible job. And then um, his animals too. I very much love his realistic way of doing animals, those fox ones. All right, okay. Let's go ahead and go to the outro. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know if you guys liked this video. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. I'll probably be putting one out per month. Um, maybe one every other, maybe other week. We'll see how um, this is received. So like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell for when the next thing comes in. And yeah, thanks for joining me. Bye.